The kind of theatre that I like is, is a theatre that isn't too um, cosy, I suppose. That there's an element of danger, there's something that makes you feel a bit, oh, it's a bit weird, is it? Because I think when the audience is actively involved, um, it becomes a very exciting place. Andrew is inspired by the playwright John Osborne, who transformed the British stage at the Royal Court Theatre in the 1950s. He was fearsome, but he, that didn't make him uh, cynical. That actually he cared passionately about, about the theatre. The British Library has a unique resource for those wanting to explore the history of British theatre, the Lord Chamberlain's Plays. Until 1968, anyone wishing to stage a play in Britain had to submit the script to the Lord Chamberlain's office, who would decide whether the play was suitable for a performance. This file contains the hidden battle fought over John Osborne's masterpiece, Look Back in Anger. So what would happen is the play would be submitted and then it would be read and commented on and then decisions will be made. So what we have in this folder here is the reader's report. OK, so he would, the, the Lord Chamberlain would, would employ people... Who would read. OK. So look back in anger would have been quite shocking to them. Yes, I can well imagine. And if you look here, it starts with an introduction. So it's both impressive and de This impressive depressing. and depressing play breaks new psychological ground dealing with a type of young man I believed had vanished 20 years ago. It is about that kind of intellectual that threshed about passionately looking for a cause. It usually married girls of good family, quarrelled with all their relations and bore them off to squalor in Pimlico or Poplar. God, it's so judgmental. In this play, the venue is a large provincial town where Jimmy and Alice and his wife share frosty digs with Cliff, Jimmy's friend. It's quite a nice, uh, actually, a nice overview of the play. Look Back in Anger was a radical play in the 1950s. The Lord Chamberlain's office made a number of suggestions to tone down the language and content. So they recommended it for licence, but only with these things removed. Cut the lavatory reference. Let's just see yeah. what that means. So. What has he said about the lavatory? No, but nothing, nothing would move them. With those two, even a simple visit to the lavatory sounded like a medieval siege. My God, it's just so innocuous. Yeah, for the things you would cut the homosexual think. reference. So we don't want people to even believe that there's such a thing as a homosexual. Yeah, these are not things that we would really no. have an issue with at all now. Yes, and so then we have page, page 43 and 44. The whole of the speech must be considerably toned down. The initial report was just the beginning. The file also contains letters, which show that the Lord Chamberlain's office in the theatre wrangled over the script for months. She's as tough as a knight in a Bombay brothel and as hairy as a gorilla's behind. Oh, well, that's slightly misogynistic, I have to say. <laughs> I'm with but, them on that. But it is, that's the sort of thing that they have a problem with, and they don't have a problem with it because it's misogynistic. Yeah. They probably have a problem with it because it's got the word behind and the word brothel yes. in it. Yes. So this is a letter from a theatre. So from Tony Richardson back to the Chamberlain's office. And he's made some, some changes. So for as tough as a knight in a Bombay brothel and as hairy as a gorilla's behind, read. She's as rough as a knight in Leicester Square and as tough as a matelot's arm. We really can't find any word as effective as brothel, so please can we use it? And they <laughs> said, no. No. And then someone's <laughs> written, yes, but in pencil. So it's the idea, I suppose, is that sex doesn't really exist. Not in the theatre. <laughs> not in the theatre. Or not in such a graphically described way. No. What you see in this file and in lots of these files is that maybe the Cham Lord Chamberlain didn't understand or didn't wish to understand, but by making them remove such tiny lines, it lost its, <laughs> it lost its point. Well, it's like music. It's all musical. So if you cut out a, yeah, some notes, you think, well, how do we get from it? there to there? It's the more, like you say, the more musical mm. kind of aspect of it, which is being lost. And yeah. because the play is all about Jimmy's anger, if you can't, if you can't have his anger, then you can't really have a yeah, play. Yeah, it's like just you're just looking back then. <laughs> <laughs> what I found extraordinary about it was seeing the handwriting of somebody and the way they've written no with a flourish. 
actually just seeing personality and looking for clues. Um, it really just gives you an insight that that censorship is a is a is a man-made activity. You know, it shows how um, revolutionary that play was and how brave and courageous it was.